Hello, uh, this is Intermediate Microeconomics 2. Um, in this chapter, I'm going to talk about monopoly. Uh, in a series of videos, I'm going to answer uh, five very important questions about monopoly. In tests or exams, most likely you will be facing one of those questions. The first, uh, the first one is pretty straightforward, so I'm going to answer it in this video. But the other uh, four questions uh, require a detailed explanation. So um, uh, please follow up for the uh, next videos. So the first question we're going to answer is what is monopoly, the definition of it, and then what are the causes of monopoly? The second question we're going to tackle is the assumptions on monopoly and how those assumptions differ from the perfectly competitive market assumptions. The third one is the setting up the optimization problem for the monopolist. Most of the time students are having difficulty setting up the optimization problem rather than solving it. All right. So this is what we're going to do in the third question. And we will also compare and contrast the optimization problem of perfectly competitive market. And then question four, um, we're going to discuss what we should learn from this optimization problem. Uh, again, in comparison to competitive equilibrium optimization problem. And then finally, I am going to talk about the inefficiency of monopoly, the concept uh, that uh, we, we measure inefficiency by the concept we call deadweight loss. So this is what I'm going to define and show how we calculate deadweight loss. All right, so the first question first, what is monopoly? Most of the times we represent monopoly as a market where there's, on, there's only one seller. Um, so uh, that means the seller is facing no competition. All right. Well, uh, obviously this is an extreme case, uh, very much like uh, the perfectly competitive market. In a perfectly competitive market, there are many sellers so that each seller is, is, is powerless to influence the market price. On the other hand, the monopoly has the, has the uh, very strong power. Uh, it is the only uh, market, uh, only seller in the market and can ch uh, charge any price it wants. All right, well, the reality is obviously in between, okay? Uh, but uh, studying these extreme cases is very valuable and important. Well, what are the causes of monopoly? Um, we kind of categorize them as um, natural causes and not so natural causes. So the, the, the natural causes, we, by the way, call it a natural monopoly. Um, so sometimes uh, the, uh, the market demand may not be large relative to the total cost function of the uh, firm operating in that market, all right? And so even if there is a competition, it is not sustainable in the long run. So, uh, so more than one firm uh, reduces down uh, the profit profitability of the firms. And so, uh, you know, some of the firms, except just one, uh, prefers to leave the market. And so uh, knowing that the others, the entrepreneurs do not enter to this market. All right. Um, for those who remember the efficiency scale in uh, in our discussions in in, in um, perfectly competitive market, if you remember, um, in any firm is going to have some average total cost. Um, usually, it's a U shape. All right. So it's total cost. I mean the fixed cost plus variable cost divided by the quantity. This is what average total cost is. Um, so it usually dec declines. Uh, this is quantity, all right? And this is, you know, everything related to money, um, including costs. So uh, as the quantity increases, the average total cost uh, decreases and then it increases. And this point, which we call a minimum efficient uh, uh, scale or, or efficiency scale, that's the point where the uh, perfectly competitive firms would like to produce in the long run. Okay. Um, well, the thing is, um, so let's say this is the um, firm operating in a market, in a specific market. So the firm prefers to produce 
um, say Q star amount of output. All right, that's the efficiency scale. Well, what about the demand? So let's say the demand curve is something like this. Okay, well here, as you see, um, even one firm is almost covers the, 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 the demand, all right? Uh, so a second firm is going to bring the total quantity Q double star, and when total quantity is two double star, I don't know, let's say it's somewhere here, clearly the quantity demand is gonna be uh, no, negative in a sense. I mean, the price should be negative because you can't really sell that much. That's the maximum um, quantity you can sell in this market. Okay, so this market is not going to allow, in a sense, a, a second firm, second identical firm, obviously, to operate in this market. A second firm may operate in this market if the second firm has a significantly lower average total cost. All right. In comparison, however, uh, let's suppose exactly the same uh, market demand. All right. So this is the inverse sloping demand curve. Uh, but I don't know, the technology has improved. And so the average total cost of the company becomes something like this. Let's suppose. All right. So again, the minimum efficiency sc efficient scale is something like this. Uh, let's call this small. Q star. So as you see, uh, you can actually produce uh, more than Q star. I mean, if this is the quantity, this should be the market price, right? So this market is going to let a bunch of other firms to enter and operate, all right? Um, and so this market is not naturally uh, prone to uh, become a monopoly market, but this market is. All right. Uh, so this is what we mean by natural monopoly. And uh, not so natural causes, while well, the patent, for example, is one reason. Um, a lot of, uh, for example, pharmaceutical companies make billions of dollars of investment to uh, come up with a new drug. And once they get or, or, or sort of find the drug, they would like to enjoy a positive profit for some time, and they ensure this positive profit for some period of time through patent. No one else can produce this drug, so they become the only seller of this particular uh, drug. Um, well, obviously, you may ask is that why then we have the patent system? Well, obviously, there's a, a lot more debate on this, but if the investor uh, knew that uh, the investor is not going to be able to enjoy the positive, positive profit for some time, they wouldn't invest the billions of dollars at the first place, right? So there's an incentive issue that we cannot ignore. Um, sometimes the government regulations allows, uh, allows but sort of uh, causes monopoly. Um, for example, uh, the government does not allow uh, more than one firm or a private run firm to operate some of the businesses. It could be the case, for example, postal services. It could be the case for the security systems um, or military, etc. Um, well, sometimes um, kind of um, a part of natural monopoly, uh, the cost of entering the market could be very high, uh, which is usually the case in the utility uh, industry is like if you're going to provide electricity to a big city, you need to make a, a billions of dollars of investment. And so entering to the market is not easy. Another reason is, is a cartel or, or collusion. So sometimes firms, uh, there are actually plenty of firms who operate in a market, but they get together, form a cartel, they collude and raise their prices. They don't price undercut each other, which is what happens in price competition. Um, so they form a cartel and, and enjoy a higher profit. Although it's illegal in many countries and in many markets and situations, um, still um, firms, I mean, firms have incentive to form cartel. And so that might be one reason, one uh, other reason why we observe monopolies. But don't forget, um, so monopoly 
is not uh, that's something we almost always observe. So don't take monopoly literally. It's like sometimes we don't really have one firm in the market, but uh, many firms, but one of the firms um, has a very uh, big market share, like 80% of the customers buy from this um, uh, firm and only 20% of the customers uh, buy from say 20 other firms. All right. So although in a literal sense, this market, this firm is not monopoly, uh, what we say, the, the firm has a, a monopoly power. So a concept that you will probably hear later in this course and in other and more advanced courses in economics. So monopoly power is basically um, the, the, the firm's power to change the market price at least for a specific group of customers. So the standard monopoly, when there's only one seller, the, the firm has the power to influence the price for all the buyers. I mean, the buyers have no other option uh, than buying from this seller. So if the monopolist increases the price, they either say, oh, you know what? The price is above my willingness to pay. I'm not going to buy it. Or they're just going to buy it. They don't have an option to go to another seller and buy the same good from another seller. All right. So that's the lack of competition component of monopoly. However, the same component, the same force exists in many markets, although we have more than one firm. All right. So in some markets, there may be uh, many uh, sellers, but um, even though the seller increases the price slightly, uh, the, the consumers do prefer to buy from the same seller. They don't want to go to another set. They don't want to switch to another seller. There might be a bunch of reasons for this, for example, transportation. So let's say, the seller is a, a local grocery store, um, all right, or supermarket. And so um, there's another supermarket, but you have to drive there, say, 15, 20 minutes. And so even if the grocery store or supermarket raises its price a little bit, you probably do not bother to go to another grocery store and, and, and purchase the goods from there. So you're going to stick to the same seller. So that seller has some monopoly power over the customers on, in, in, this, in this region. Well, that's not complete power though, as in the case of monopoly that we will consider. Uh, because if the grocery store or supermarket raises the prices or doubles the prices, for example, probably most of the customers will actually prefer to travel uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and buy the products from the other seller. All right. So the monopoly power is important and does exist in markets that are not monopoly. All right. So in that sense, the monopoly model that we're going to consider is an extreme case, is a, is a, is a simplification where we're going to consider uh, a situation uh, where there's only one seller. Uh, that makes our life easier. Um, in chapter four, for example, we're going to talk about uh, duopoly, oligopoly. And so, as you will see, things are getting a bit more complicated uh, when we have more than one firm. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to talk about the assumptions of monopoly and how those assumptions uh, compare to the perfectly competitive market. All right.